This is ABC 15 Mornings. Breaking news of a police shooting. We're live at the scene. A third booster shot. Now it's going to be up to the FDA to figure out when and how that happens. Major new developments in the race against the Delta variant. New this morning. These people mean the world to me and people are dying. A student offering compassion to those who need it most. Out of money and out of patience. I looked up and said to my husband, oh my God. That says our flight is canceled. One option left to let Joe know. But first, breaking news right now uh, as a man is in critical condition after being shot by Phoenix police and that shooting happening near 59th Avenue and Bethany Home Road. That's where we find ABC 15's Mark Thompson this morning. Mark, what are police saying about how all of this escalated? Well, I was pretty involved, Nick. Good morning to you and Kaylee. And now that the sun has started to rise, it is uh, now putting some more light on the scene here. An armed man reaching for his waistband. That is what police say caused two officers to open fire here this morning, striking that suspect here in the alley. That 25 year old man now in the hospital with critical injuries. This shooting taking place at around 11 o'clock, but it was actually began some two hours earlier at around 930 yesterday when police got a call of shots fired near 72nd Avenue and Glen Drive. Multiple calls were made into police and as police were actually en route to the scene, they got a call from a family member saying that the man uh, was uh, saying that he was suicidal and that he had a gun. And when police actually arrived to that area, they searched the home, they searched the backyard. They did not find the suspect anywhere, but they did find shell casings indicating that shots had been fired. And that's what led to the scene here at 60th and Bethany home, where again, police located the suspect here in the alley. And they say that he did not cooperate with verbal commands. Uh, again, they say that it, he was holding a cell phone in one hand and then reached for his waistband with the other hand. That's what caused uh, two officers to open fire on the suspect. We've seen several uh, shell casings back there uh, indicating that there may have been multiple shots fired. That 25 year old in critical condition at the hospital. Reporting live this morning, Mark Thompson, ABC 15 Arizona. I'll send it back to you. And Mark, we know you'll stay on scene to gather us the latest information from police. We do want to say thank you for starting part of your day with us. We sure appreciate it. Kaylee O'Kelly here in studio alongside Nick Saletti. Let's check in with meteorologist Jorge Torres and that most accurate forecast. All right, we know fall arrives today, Jorge. Feeling kind of fall like this morning, but later, not so much. Yeah, it'll feel like fall for now, so enjoy it because it'll still feel like summer at about midday and in the early afternoon with temperatures in excess of 100 degrees. We just can't get away from the tri triple digits, at least for now. But a beautiful start to this Wednesday morning with temperatures across the valley, generally in the 60s and 70s, including Wickenburg now 66 degrees, Buckeyes 71, Goodyear 75. Down in Pinal County, temperatures are in the mid 70s there in Maricopa and in Gilbert. Temperatures are currently at 70 degrees. So if you want to enjoy the trails this morning, a fantastic start for it with temperatures staying in the 70s through at least 7 and eventually in the 80s by 8 o'clock and then by 10 o'clock we will be in the 90s and calling for a high of 103 degrees with some morning breezes on this first day of fall. But there is a cool down and rain chance returning to your 7 day forecast. We'll break that down for you coming up in just a few minutes. But first, here's circuit traffic with Megan Thompson. Good morning, Megan. Good morning, Jorge. And good morning to all of you at home on this Wednesday. You made it to hump day. I'm Megan Thompson watching those roads for you to in Incidents to tell you about right there in central Phoenix. The I-10 eastbound, the entry ramp from the I-17 southbound. We have a stalled truck right in that area, so exactly near the stack. We also have a crash reported on the I-17 southbound on the exit ramp to 7th Avenue. And this is also an area where we see lots of trouble, lots of slowing. So something like that does not help. Now off the freeway between Grand Avenue and the 101 Glendale Avenue, we have a crash reported at 83rd Avenue and in the East Valley on the US 60 in the 60 in the eastbound lanes on the school road. We have reports of a crash, but as I'm looking at those traffic flows, they still look really good at this point of the morning. Let's check those desert drive times. I 10 eastbound from the loop 303 to the mini stack already in the yellow at this early hour at about 30 minutes. I-17 southbound from the 101 to the stack right around 12 minutes and the 51 from the 101 to the mini stack 13 minutes. Okay, Megan, happening overnight, a deadly crash on the Loop 101. This is Scottsdale near Frank Lloyd Wright. DPS telling us someone on a motorcycle has died. 
Right now, they are not sure if any other cars were involved in the case, but we are expecting an update this morning. New this morning, major news from Pfizer. ABC News reporting the company will likely be granted FDA authorization for booster shots. Now, this would be for people 65 and up, those at high risk for severe cases and possibly frontline and essential workers like teachers. Friday, an FDA panel voted to recommend boosters for this group. Today, Pfizer will present its data to the CDC's vaccine advisors. Within days, third shots could begin. A new study finds people with cancer have the same immune response and side effects after getting two doses of the vaccine as somebody without cancer. Researchers say this is important because cancer patients were not part of clinical or initial vaccine trials. Maricopa County Board of Supervisors member Steve Shukri is resigning. His last day will be in early November. His decision to step down comes after a conversation was leaked where he made negative comments about fellow board members over differences with the state Senate's election audit. Shukri releasing a statement apologizing, saying he shouldn't have made those statements. The Board of Supervisors can pick his uh, replacement, but they must uh, live actually in Maricopa County. In the meantime, a new program could be saving lives. Hiking rescues we know are down in Phoenix, where trials are shut down during trails, excuse me, are shut down during excessive heat warnings. The city says rescues on Camelback, Piestua, and South Mountain all drop from July to August. Earlier this summer, nearly a dozen firefighters suffered some kind of heat exhaustion during these kinds of rescues. So we know they're dangerous for our first responders as well. The program runs through the end of this month. One of those rescues happening Tuesday, a hiker flown down to safety on Camelback. Phoenix Fire says the person made it halfway up the Echo Canyon side before getting overheated and calling for help. Well, every night, and these are staggering numbers to share with you, thousands of people are sleeping on the streets Right here in Maricopa County, the number of people experiencing homelessness has gone up since the beginning of this pandemic. New for you this morning, Amelia Fabiano with a story of a young man working to help others. He is truly an inspiration. He really is. Here's some great inspiration for your Wednesday morning, right? So he typically hits up hot spots for people experiencing homelessness, like here at Tempe Beach Park, parts of Mesa. But I caught up with him one morning in downtown Phoenix in a spot he calls the zone. His task that morning was fairly simple, hand out some breakfast to people who need it. But the message of his organization, Hugs for the Homeless, is certainly much greater. Breakfast is about to be served as Austin Davis loads up for the morning. We're going to bring out muffins and chocolate milk and sodas, water, uh, apple slices, all that stuff. And then I'm going to drive a friend to rehab. He's a senior at ASU, but he'll tell you some of his greatest lessons and best teachers don't come from the classroom. This is my family. You know, these people mean the world to me and people are dying. They're out here on the streets. I was just with someone five minutes ago who was telling me this heat is killing my friends and it's so hot. I want to rip my hair out. It's not even 10 a.m. and he's already seeing the effects of scorching temperatures in the valley. He spends five days a week trying to help people cool off. We just spray people down with some ice cold water. People use it to take showers. They use it to cool off. Some of my closest friends have have died this summer or last from from the heat. It's 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 really scary. Davis tells me he's only seeing it more often. I think that because of COVID, you know, a lot of people have lost their jobs or, you know, a huge medical bill could has sent a lot of people to the streets. Even as temperatures cool down, those problems don't go away. But Davis says neither will his push to promote empathy and compassion. It's what life is all about, you know, being there for your neighbor, being there for your community and um, trying to help as many people as possible. And a lesson all of us can learn. Show people that they're valued and loved and they're not alone out here. All right, so Davis obviously commits a lot of his free time to helping others, but he says you don't have to spend hours on end just to make a difference. He says carrying some bottles of water in the back of your car, maybe a box of snacks to hand out to people who may need it can make a world of a difference. And if you want to help out his cause specifically or maybe donate to him, we do have all of that information online under this story on ABC 15. Com. Reporting live in Tempe this morning, Amelia Fabiano, ABC 15, Arizona. Kaylee, I'll send it back to you. A great story of goodness, and thank you for the inspiration and the motivation to keep the goodness moving forward, Amelia. <laughs>
Well, it is a better way to treat migraines, at least some people say. Up next here on ABC 15 Mornings, instead of a pill, you might be able to use a nasal spray. Plus, looking to improve your health, mood, and appearance? Maybe yeah. All three new research this morning shows a better life could depend on what you put into your body. You are what you eat, right? You may have had a delayed flight, but probably nothing like this. I'm investigator Joe Deucey with how one couple's new flight meant a different day from a different airport. And the ABC 15 Live Drive is hitting the road in the East Valley. This is the 202 just passing Elliott. Beautiful sunrise shot with those purple skies and clear conditions. We'll check those desert drive times coming up. At 613 on this Wednesday, the Department of Homeland Security promising a change at the border in the next 48 hours. Thousands of people, mostly from Haiti, remain under the Del Rio International Bridge in Texas. DHS is working to move migrants to more processing centers. A bill to prevent a government shutdown now heads to the U.S. Senate. The measure passed by the House would extend funding and keep the government open through the 3rd of December. It is not expected to pass the Senate because the bill would raise the debt ceiling. Food could be more expensive next year. Fertilizer prices are the highest they've been in about a decade. That could mean smaller harvests and higher food prices. Well, get this. This is going to be welcome relief for a lot of people. The FDA approving a new treatment for migraines. Trudessa, as it's called, is a nasal spray. Doctors say it does offer more precise dosing. In a phase three study, 66% of patients said they did experience pain relief. All eyes on Microsoft this morning. Its product launch event starts at 8 a.m. The company expected to reveal a new Surface Pro laptop and a Surface Duo, which is essentially a foldable two screen tablet. What will they think of next? It's pretty newfangled. <laughs> ABC 15 Desert Drive Time sponsored by Accident Law Group. By the time you catch up with that one, there's already another one that you have to keep learning. But wait, we got it <laughs> right around 615 <laughs> now on your Wednesday morning. I'm watching those roads for you this morning. Zooming into Central Phoenix where we have the most issues going on this morning. Things to give you a heads up on I-10 eastbound, the entry ramp from the I-17 southbound. We have a stalled truck off to the right. Your desert drive time on the I-10 eastbound from the 101 to the mini stack is right around 21 minutes, 37 miles per hour is how fast you're traveling. We have a crash on the I-17 southbound too. This is the exit ramp to 7th Avenue. So checking that desert drive time for you. It looks a little bit slower in that area as we take a live view of the 17 near 19th Avenue where that incident is going on. Plenty of brake lights building so that drive time is right around 11 minutes from the stack to the split. We have a hazard to let you know about Lincoln Drive, a gas leak near the Mountain Shadows Golf Club. That's what that icon has popped up on your screen between the 101 and the 51. Your speeds though on the 17, the 51 and the 101 are at or above the speed limit. A similar story in the east Valley with a 60 in both the 202 Red Mountain and the 202 Santan. And you see those East Valley Desert Drive times all look green at this point of the morning. Now let's get a check of that most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jorge Torres on this first day of fall. You know, feeling really nice out there this morning. It is feeling fall like out there with temperatures in the lower 70s. Making good morning everyone on this First day of fall here in Arizona, officially at 1221 this afternoon. So we've got about oh six hours to go before it's officially here, but we're getting a taste of it with temperatures outside in the lower 70s in Chandler and Mesa and Glendale and Goodyear too. And at Sky Harbor, it's still at 77 degrees. Notice how our South Mountain camera is shaking. That's because the wind is cranking up from the southeast at 10 to 15. And it'll be the case uh, for the rest of the morning across Arizona right now. Feeling like fall for sure for you folks in Flax. Have good morning there in Coconino County. Now 36 degrees, 39 in the South Can uh, the Grand Canyon area. There along the south rim, 57 in Kingman, 76 in Lake Havasu, and 50s there along the rim there in Cholo, and 67 in Graham County. The bus stop forecast for this morning showing a cooler start with temperatures in the 70s, climbing into the lower 80s by 8 a.m. and will be in the mid 80s with abundant sunshine by 9. And the heat will be cranking up for sure this afternoon with temperatures anywhere from 80 in Heber to 85 in Payson, 86 for you folks in Yavapai County and Prescott, 103 in Lake Havasu, and here in the valley calling for a high of 103 as well. And notice how temperatures will be anywhere from 98 in Cape Creek to 104 in Buckeye. That's well above the seasonal average of 99 degrees. So we're going to be several degrees above that seasonal high, at least for the next couple of days. So as you head home, as the kids head home, it'll be still warm with temperatures in the 100s through at least 
4 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, as far as the winds, as I mentioned, they'll be with us uh, for the next several hours, at least here in the Phoenix Metro, coming in from the east and southeast, anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour, gusting up to 25 at times. But up in the high country, the wind will not really be an issue, at least for today. Some breezes here and there, but for the most part, the winds in areas like Flagstaff will be on the lighter end. As far as the valley, not the case. We're talking wind speeds anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour, gusting to 20 to 25 miles per hour. And as far as the next several days, we are anticipating that ridge of high pressure that's causing these temperatures to be above average to finally slide to the east. This will allow a disturbance from the north and northwest to move in, giving Arizona a little more cloud cover, cooler temperatures and better rain chances beginning tomorrow, but especially for the weekend and early next week too, as that area of low pressure just kind of meanders uh, over the southwest for a while. So your seven day forecast for the Phoenix Metro showing temperatures above 100 degrees through at least Thursday with lows in the 70s. Then beginning Friday, those temperatures drop into the mid 90s with rain chances through Sunday. Now, as far as Flagstaff, you'll be in the 70s all the way through next week with rain changes almost each and every day beginning tomorrow with lows staying in the 40s. Let's talk with almost $500 in added expenses after her flight from New York to Phoenix was canceled. Now she's turning to the Let Joe Know team for some answers. The idea of that is infuriating, right? So what are your rights if an airline does change a flight? Here's Joe Ducey. We're never, ever late. Christy and her husband were on their way back to the Valley after visiting family in New York. They got to JFK early, checked their luggage, and made it through security. Then plans changed. I look up and I said to my husband, oh my God, that says our flight is canceled. She says after a 45-minute wait, she was shocked to find they were booked on a flight more than 24 hours later and from a different airport in a different state. They didn't give us an option. I couldn't sit on the phone for five hours and say I'm not leaving out of Newark. I had to keep what I had because we have to get back to, back home to work. She says that's when costs of the delay started to add up. For the hotel, it was $235. I put gas going from Jersey to New York was $8. The bridges, the Triborough Bridge to go from uh, JFK into the city was about $10. It came to $460, and that didn't include their meals. Since none of the costs were because of them, Christy says she tried to get JetBlue to pay the extras, but she says calls were disconnected, and there was no response to emails or even a certified letter. So Christy let me know. We contacted JetBlue. They told us in part it's never our intention to cancel our flight, especially with short notice. If customers aren't satisfied with rebooked flights, they can change it by self-serving on our website and can contact customer service. But with so many others delayed, Christy says waiting to make a change wasn't worth it. At first, Christy was only offered a flight credit for the cancellation, but after we got involved, problem solved. Christy got $450 to cover those extra travel costs. Thanks to JetBlue for doing the right thing. And go to abc15.com slash let Joe know if you've had a similar issue with any company. I'm investigator Joe Ducey. If you've got a problem, let me know. You are reliable. Okay, it is 620. And a local nonprofit is hoping to give away 10 million bottles, wow. I know, of hand sanitizer to any organization that needs it. Arizonans for Children says the company Healing Solutions donated the bottles to them and they want to spread the love. They want to share. Pallets of hand sanitizer will be available for pickup tomorrow and Friday from 7 a.m. to noon. All you have to do is head to their warehouse, and that is located near the I-17 at Peoria in Phoenix. Well, back open and ready for business. Next on ABC 15 Mornings, a popular student-run restaurant preparing to serve customers for the first time this year. And get this, it's new this morning, the demand for mortgages spiking over the past week. So does that mean the housing market is about to get even hotter? And her story has dominated news headlines, but now the disappearance of Gabby Petito is helping shine a light on other missing person cases, including the search for a missing 24 year old right here in Arizona. 624. OK, so we all know ultra processed foods. They're not good for anybody, and especially so when it comes to our kids. And now experts are warning they can also impact their mood and energy levels and your quality of life, right? So these foods are typically loaded with calories, fat, sugar, and salt, and low in things like fiber, vitamins, and minerals. We're talking things like cereals, candy, cookies, soda, and quick meals. If you know you have a really busy lifestyle or your kids are really busy and you 
you know, cooking from scratch is really hard. Sometimes picking foods that are convenient, but not as processed might work. So sometimes you can pick things that are frozen, like frozen chicken breasts and cook those. Sometimes things that are canned, they're okay. Yeah, but it can be overwhelming, right? So it's a lot to follow. So here's the deal. Experts are saying, just try and make sure the foods you bring into your home are foods that are low in sodium. Well, welcoming back guests on the Bolton board this morning, the student run restaurant at Scottsdale Community College opening its doors again. The Artichoke Grill has been closed since last year because of the pandemic. It's run by students in their culinary arts program. It's going to be open for lunch from 1145 to 1 p.m. Tuesdays through Fridays. Online reservations are recommended. They even added some new options to the menu in honor of the reopening. Enjoy some good food while supporting the next generation of chefs. That's on today's bulletin board. Well, from that to this, Starbucks celebrating the first day of fall with a special deal. Today, rewards members who order a grande or larger handcraft drink using the app are going to get a free drink coupon. Okay, it's going to automatically be loaded to your account Saturday. The coupon's maximum value is ten dollars so i mean you get a pretty you get a trenta for that yeah with like extras in there and then something else is what they're hoping for there you right? go the pumpkin scone i highly recommend mm. it the pumpkin scone <laughs> folks and it's seasonal get it while you can well it's a new reality for so many people out there next at 6 30 the amount of workers who are living paycheck to paycheck And as we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, we're going to take you inside of a brand new exhibit here in Mesa, showcasing some of the incredible individuals who've helped lead the city. And two officers open fire on a man with a gun. This all taking place here in Glendale. He is now in the hospital, but there are multiple scenes involved. I'll break it all down coming up in a live report. And fall is almost here, just a few hours away, but it will not feel like fall, at least yet here in the Valley this afternoon. But later this week and this weekend, looking more like it. Details coming up in your most accurate forecast.